welcome to the Sleon Productions podcast, where we interview entrepreneurs, speakers, authors, people that bring value to this world, uh, a, a troubled world, but there's always some hope and positivity out there. And today we're interviewing a client of mine uh, that we met about last year, I believe in the fall on LinkedIn, and he's inspired me and and obviously his business uh, practices have been amazing. His vision, Dr. Robert Watts, he's based in California. He is a former football player and now he's an entrepreneur. Dr. Watts, welcome to the Leon Productions podcast. Thank you. Uh, Sa- Santiago, it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me to come on to your show. I'm looking forward to a great interview. I'm from the South Bronx in New York originally. I uh, grew up there, I was reared there until about the age of 14 when I went off to boarding school in New England to the Vermont Academy. And for all those listening, um, my school just created a scholarship fund in my name. So I'm gonna be expecting you folks to donate to that scholarship fund for African-American students preferably and then students of color. It is school's been around since about 1863. I was fortunate to be one of the one of the first five or six African American students to attend the school in 1969. Um, a part of my story is that I went there as an illiterate student. We don't have time enough in this broadcast to um, explain how I pulled that off, but nevertheless, uh, I attended there and proceeded to flunk everything they gave me. <laughs> but um, I hung in there, and they hung in there with me, and I eventually graduated with honors and got accepted at the schools like Cornell, Boston College, where I eventually attended. So um, went on to BC and was a football All-American, was drafted by the New Orleans Saints in the third round, 1977, and um, hurt my back and didn't really actually get to play there. But they released me and was acquired by the Oakland Raiders, who I did play for for a few games and I got hurt again. and. Uh, that curtailed my, my career. Uh, after a year, I went to Canada, played a little bit up there in the exhibition season, got hurt again, got surgery, and decided to walk away from the game at 27. And uh, went to school, got a master's degree at San Francisco State in speech and communication studies with a sort of an emphasis on rhetoric and general semantics. And um, they, held, they, kept, they kept a hold of me and asked me what I teach. So while I was in graduate school, I started teaching and ended up teaching there for about seven years in the speech department, teaching business communication and public speaking, primarily interpersonal communication, conflict resolution, courses like that. That um, evolved to me teaching at a bunch of colleges in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, including Holy Names and a lot of the community colleges. Even taught a course over at UC Berkeley once not for the university, but for community college that used their space. So I actually co- I taught on their campus, I should say. Um, so after that, um, I contracted um, a lymphoma and it was at that time that the state of California had extended me a scholarship to get my doctorate for free. Well, for, it was considered an unforgivable unfor- loan scholarship where I would commit four years of teaching in the Cal State University system. But I contracted lymphoma and um, I had to get treated for about a year with chemotherapy and radiation, um, surgery at Stanford Medical Center. And when I came back from that, the state offered me the scholarship again, but by that time I was fighting through the battle of post-traumatic stress disorder from the, from the cancer experience and um, had to return the scholarship a second time. So when I turned 50, I decided to go back and pay my own way. And I went back and got my doctorate at 50. It was a three-year program. I accelerated, got out in about close to a year and a half by doubling up all my courses and um, wrote a few books and um, started developing a consulting career. I'll be 68 next month. So I've been consulting since about age of 45, 50. 45 to 50 is when I really started getting some traction. Uh, and um, that yeah, brings us full circle. I've 
eight grandchildren and three children. And so, you know, I've lived, I've lived through the cancer to uh, develop a beautiful family and um, helped a lot of people along the way in my career as a consultant in organizations of all types, uh, nonprofit and profit, um, also some municipalities. With all these accolades and all these achievements, um, let's go towards the beginning, Dr. Watts. Who inspired you? It could have been a family member or maybe a friend, but who inspired you when you were young? My mother. I never had a father, so um, my mother was my world. And my older sister, who was a nurse. She was about 14 years older than me. But I looked up to her as I did some of my older brothers, but my sister became a professional while I was a child. So I saw this person wearing a uniform and was a real professional person and carried herself that way. And, and so much so that I was motivated that when I got to Boston College, I, I, my first major was nursing, trying to be like my big sister. But I realized she was a lot smarter than me because I couldn't, I couldn't keep up academically in that major and play football at the, at the division one level at the same time, especially um, when you take into consideration my beginnings um, in dealing with illiteracy at, you know, into a late age at like 15, 16. So, you know, while, while I was able to overcome it, uh, I think you need to have some, at that time in my life, I needed to have some foundation that I didn't have at the time to take on the chemistries and the physics and the biology and all that stuff that they wanted me to take at the time. Um, I had managed to get through a prestigious boarding school. I did well, but you know, I was still catching up at that time. And I did find that I had a gift for writing and speaking. So I switched my major to speech and theater and um, was a 3.8 student my freshman year at Boston College until um, some spinal cord surgeries and things like that in college derailed you know, my opportunity to be consistent in class, but I still finished uh, as an honor student. So, you know, did okay. Let's switch into sports. I'm a sports guy. Um... You don't really talk about it much with me, but uh, tell us your experience with that. Was that something that you dreamed about when you were a kid or it just kind of happened? No, I don't think that ever just happens. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of hard work and you got to be very passionate, especially in a contact sport where you consistently uh, getting injured and hurt. Um, either one of those are always happening. You may not always get injured, but you're always getting hurt. Right. So you're always getting banged up. And so in order to keep getting up to do that, you have to be really passionate about it, and committed. And um, I was a three sport guy. You know, I was a pre all prep and basketball and football and track. So I was a gifted athlete. I was a New England high school, I was a New England 200 meter champion and shot put champion. College, I was on the Boston College one by 10 relay team that set the New England record. So, you know, when I, I played JV basketball in those days at Boston College and scored 60 something points in a game. So, you know, I had a lot of talent uh, and um, that talent didn't come, depending on what, you, what, you, what theory you believe in. Some people believe that talent is something you're born with. Some people say that you have to nurture it and develop it. I'm one of those who believe that um, you have to nurture it and develop it. Uh, and talent is a skill that you've refined. Right. So uh, I believe that from the time that I could watch my older brothers engage in sports and then enter out into the community, which was very athletic uh, community, very athletically focused. Um, I wanted to be one of those. I think partly was um, the impetus falls a lot with it gave me a certain self-esteem and esteem. You know, it, uh, while I couldn't read and write as a kid. I could be respected and recognized for my athletic powers. And so that gave me a sense, of, a sense of strength and a sense of value that I'm really grateful for because it bought me some time. Tell us about your consulting business. Uh, what type of uh, businesses or people that you have consulted in the past? Well, I've been fortunate to have worked across the spectrum. Um, doesn't matter um, what industry, um, my skill set is in organizational development and organizational change management, organizational performance, 
uh, performance management. I'm a psychologist, so um, I can delve into things with people that other consultants may not be able to do in order to help them to get out of their own way. Uh, it's, you know, I wrote a book called People Are Never the Problem, and that's the foundation of everything I do because you know, it's a tenant of mine, and I believe in that, right? So uh, I start with looking at organizations as as a, as a person, like the IRS does, as corporations of persons, right? And so I take it to the point where it's literal that an organization is its people, right? And no matter what you say, people are the organization. And when they go away, the organization only exists in name. But it's the people in that organization that give the brand its, its, um, its power and its esteem, right? And its value, it's the effort of those people that um, brings that to the consciousness of the, of the consumer, consumer market. So my place in organizations is, any, uh, is a place that can exist in any organization if they have a couple of things. One, a true interest in the development of human beings, right? Not just profit, right? But if you're really sincere about developing people which you should be if you're a leader in an organization because you owe that to those people because they're giving you their time and their lives to grow a business for you and your board and your stockholders and whoever is a partner of yours in that organization, um, the human beings are there creating that value, right? Uh, and so we owe it to them to listen to what their needs are, their professional needs are, and, and in some cases, their personal needs. Um, you know, you have employee, um, employee programs that are now sensitive to people's mental health, physical health, as they should be. You spend more time there than you spend with your families. So what do we owe, what do we owe people? We owe them the, the loyalty and the dedication to listen to what they're trying to do with their professional lives and their personal lives, as, as I said, in some regard, and to help them to develop that with the resources that are available to us as leaders and managers in, in organizations. So if, you, if you're about that, then you want Dr. Watts in your space to help you to, to achieve that, right? If you're not about that, then you probably don't want me around. <laughs> there you have it, a plain and simple. It's real simple. I'm at the age now where that's it. And if you don't want to use me in that regard or you're not really driven, if those aren't your values, if you're not driven by those particular values and principles, then we're not going to, we're going to clash anyway, because, you know, that drives, that's all, that's what I'm driven by. And that's what my organization's all about. You recently launched a program called SOI, uh, which stands for Show, Observe, Interact, and Grow. Tell us about this. I know it's, it's, a, it's a technology company, but tell us a little bit about that. Well, SOI is a, a mobile accessible platform. It can fall into the category of a SaaS platform, software as another service. And it's a hybrid and it's very unique in that um, it takes your strategic static models off the wall. And my models are your vision, mission, and values off the wall. And we integrate them into the platform so that they merge with um, your areas of accountability. We like to call them areas of accountability which consist of your tasks or the skill sets that you, you need to perform a task, your, your performance indicators, your KPIs, your smart goals that you use as objectives in our platform to track, and your KRAs, your key result areas that sort of are the canopy for all that which I've just described. Um, your, your key result areas, those specific areas and particular outcomes that are critical to the success of your organization. So um, our platform, integrates your culture into those sort of technical uh, variables and indicators so that you have this alignment that you can then use um, for a balanced scorecard. So you align these things strategically. You take your core values uh, and you give them what we call behavioral compasses so that they can be surgically selected for different uh, or like for lack of a better word, clusters of outcomes that you're trying to achieve so that then you can use that balanced scorecard as a means to track performance. You can use it for, um, for hiring purposes. 
for scale for creating the Likert like scales to evaluate potential hires or vendors because you can create job maps of vendors which with those coordinates in it and you can also create projects out of those um, structures and you also can then populate our communication platform with those clusters so that you can report on the document. I mean, you can report on the um, activity and the outcomes that people are responsible for. And all of that is tied in uh, sort of like what we call, um, uh, I don't want to get too esoteric on your show, but <laughs> we, we call them fractals, you know, like a fractal in nature. Uh, and so in that respect, it's a fractal because it's reflecting the strategic plan that's built in the system. So every person's um, strategic document is a, a fractal of the overall strategic plan. So you can never not be engaged with your strategic plan. People are communicating on their um, performance and that is reflective of whatever aspect of their job reflects the responsibility and accountabilities for achieving that which is in the strategic plan. So it's, as you can, as you can hear, it's very complex, but simple to use. Complex in that uh, you have a lot of different parts that are woven together seamlessly. Uh, you have a, the capacity to do performance appraisals accurately because those particular outcomes are being reported in what we call in, our, in the now communication platform. And so you all a leader or manager has to do is go read the reports and then do the scoring, right? Because it's the exact same template, right? And then lastly in the platform, in terms of structures is the, um, well, two last things in the structure is the VCMC tree, which is our value uh, uh, cluster uh, uh, map canvas. And that's where we can bring in customers, vendors and suppliers and give them uh, performance um, objectives that, and we can partner with them with those performance objectives and create a value chain so that everybody's in the same space in the, in the platform communicating through our in and out messaging platform, which allows companies to capture value better. You collect the data, you start to understand better the both the quantitative and qualitative aspects of what's going on with, between your customers, uh, your vendors and suppliers and your internal talent. And then you can start to look at, study that data and say, okay, you know, we can probably capture some value here and also deliver value to our customer at the same time by studying these interactions and um, observing these, uh, these results. You can also recalibrate the, the um, strategic plan better because you're actually getting real time data and both quantitative and qualitative data to look at and study to generate information and to generate knowledge out of that then lets you reset things, right? So in a sense, you become your own consultant. <laughs> all the data that you would normally pay a consultant to come help you to mine is already available to you. And we teach you how to study that data, right? The last component in there is the e-learning center because um, as a practitioner and a former university professor, I know how important it is, as I said in the beginning, to develop talent. One thing is to hire someone to give them a job and say, hey, this is your direction, go do this. The other thing is to say, okay, how am I going to leverage that talent? How am I going to develop that talent and leverage that talent for that talent's benefit and the organization's benefit? So that we don't have to suffer turnover and we can get stronger retention. We can develop a serious, realistic succession plan because the people that we hire are gonna still be there and they're gonna be better in terms of doing what they do when they showed up. So our e-learning center gives us that capacity to take any, um, any type of initiative and build courses around it for the individual or department or the whole organization. And there you have it. You can visit on soigweb.com, which uh, we help uh, to maintain the website. A lot of uh, not information, but very intriguing uh, for your company as well. You've written in a few books for them. Uh, People are never the problem. Development of LADS, Swim Sideways, and the Plastic Coated Leaf. Tell us a little bit about them and how can they find the books? Uh, Swim Sideways is a book I wrote about um, being aligned with your values. It's a novella um, 
and I, it's, uh, I use, it's a true story, but I, I change the names and locations a lot to protect my client, right? But it's a true story about a turnaround in an organization that I had to teach um, how to use its core values to get aligned. But in doing that, it transformed the culture of the organization and it empowered leadership to be available to people in ways that let people know that leadership uh, is there to serve them and to provide them with the resources they need so that they could be the best they can be. And in the long run, that's exactly what the customer wants to experience, right? When they come to your organization, they want to, exp they want to experience a capable person who feels empowered and who has the resources to deliver the service that the customer wants, right? So uh, Swim Sideways is about navigating the rough currents of life and business. We use a metaphor of surviving in a rip current, right, to illustrate Swim Sideways. Uh, if you're in a rip current and uh, you're trying to swim into the shore, you're swimming into the current. And when you swim into the current, you're on a treadmill and you're not going forward. You're going to go further and further out to sea. And you won't drown because you can't swim. You'll drown because you're exhausted. So all one has to do is turn sideways and swim perpendicular to the current for about 30 feet and you're out of the rip current. But how many of us in life, in the rip currents of life, are able to stop and change their mind and innovate? and stop doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. We become creatures of our own habits and fears and anxieties. And we go faster into the current, thinking that we can overpower it. Thinking that if we become stagnant and stationary, passive, that it will pass us by. But the current is gonna take you no matter what, as long as you're in its path. So you have to figure out in life how to swim sideways, how to get out of the current, because you, you're not stronger than the current. So it's a metaphor, but um, what I find is that when we align ourselves with our values, our values our, allow us to sort of circumvent currents in life that we can't get out of normally, right? So we go to our values and say, okay, I can, well, hold on. What's invaluable to me? What's of value to me? My family, my health, my community, my God. Well, the things I'm doing to get ahead are inconsistent with those things. The goal I'm trying to achieve doesn't align well with that. The company I keep doesn't support what I really believe. So why am I doing this? <laughs> Why am I behaving this way? But if you don't understand your core values, then you don't have an answer. So the book teaches us how to use core values to align ourselves so that we can head in the right and proper direction. Um, LADS actually is my dissertation, my doctoral dissertation, and is another cornerstone of my work. It is a um, action learning model which talks about there can be no learning without action and no action without learning. It gets into appreciative inquiry, which means I don't have to look for, I don't have to look for weaknesses and problems. I can search for strengths and the weaknesses and, and problems will emerge on their own. But guess what? I'll also find out how my strengths are transferable for dealing with them. We are better than we ever give ourselves credit for. Human beings are preoccupied with what they do wrong, <laughs> right? They spend their lifetime trying to fix themselves, right? You can't fix yourself. You can change the behavior, but the self is just fine, right? So one has to focus on, you know, the, the, appreci the appreciative side of the self. What do I appreciate about myself? What do I appreciate about my, my effort, my ability? And once I can get um, uh, couched in that and, and confident in that and examine it and be analytical about it, pick it apart and put it in categories of strengths, then sit back and go, okay, what seems to be the problem? 
And what can I draw from this matrix to address that problem? Because I've been here a long time. I must be doing a lot of things right. So in organizations, you'd be surprised how many times I've gone into an organization. We, we got these problems. Can you fix? And we're, 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 we're doing this, you know, um, we're going to do this um, uh, a SWOT analysis. And, and blah, blah, blah. That's okay. I hear you. I hear you. Let's eliminate the weaknesses, though. Uh, let me hear what you've done well to get you to this point. How long you been around? Well, 25 years, okay. You must have done a lot of things right. How many employees you got? Oh, 500, okay. Must be doing a lot of things right. So let me ask you, what's your core competency? What are you excellent at? And you'd be surprised how many of them struggle with answering those questions because they're so consumed with the threat and the weaknesses that are, that are sort of uh, ruminating in their consciousness, their psyche, that they've lost sight. Competition has scared them or the market has shifted and they feel intimidated. And so they start changing things and moving things around and, and lose sight of themselves. They lose their identities. And so sometimes you just have to get them re-anchored. And that's what LADS is all about, right? That's what that dissertation was all about going in in an environment and make those people, make those organizations action learners. Learn about yourself. Send everybody out on assignment to discover themselves again. Go find out what you do well. Come back and share with each other. Cycle it again. Go back out. Apply it. Okay. 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 You did. Things have gotten better, haven't it? Yep. Okay. Why? Because you're applying your talent again. You're not fighting with each other. You're not blaming each other anymore. You're focused on looking in the mirror and saying, oh, you know, you're pretty handsome. You look pretty good. Wow, I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? Okay, I, you know what? I think I'm going to keep you, right? <laughs> so, so that's what LADS is all about. There you have it. All the four books condensed in a couple of minutes. Dr. Watts, what is the best way to reach you online? Uh, so they can know more. Well, I'm your about, client. About your services. You, should, you should know that. <laughs> I could say it, but I want you. You know, I want you to say it. You. I'm your client, man. <laughs> well, you could go to uh, Watts uh, OTS or ToyWeb.com, and obviously it'll be in the description if you want to uh, click on it and whatnot. Are you on social media? Yes, I'm on um, LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook and Twitter. Dr. Uh, Watts. I don't have those addresses on the top of my head. <laughs> but I'm we'll, on the we'll, yeah, we'll post it uh, uh, beneath this description. And wow, this is a very encouraging podcast. Uh, definitely got more in depth uh, uh, with you, Dr. Watts. It's very inspirational. Any closing words? Uh, before I want to say S. Leon Productions is a great company. Um, I met... Santiago, some about a year or so to eat now. And I if, believe so, yeah. And if you ask him to get something done, it gets done. <laughs> Thank you. Follows through, thorough, ethical, hardworking young man, um, believes in what he does, and um, takes a lot of pride in helping people with their business. And um, I'm just really proud to know you. I'm glad to see you got your own podcast, and I'm honored that you would have brought me on your show. Dr. Watts, it's been a pleasure, long time coming for this to happen. And I am blessed and thankful for you coming on to the Sleon Productions podcast. Hey, you were.